What's going on, man? Welcome back to the basement. I'm Ron, and hot damn, I've done it again. We are on time to the stream. We've streamed twice this week. Some are calling me Mr. March. Some are calling me March in general. Some are calling me the Cinderella sweetheart, the bracket buster. I'm here. How are we doing today? If you're in the chat, let me know. Say what's up. Um, I'm going to drop a little link in the Discord. But I figured, you know, I, I didn't really, I, I wasn't really planning to do this stream. But then we had the Calvin Ridley news drop today. And I figured, why not hop back on here and talk some ball with the good people? So what do we got going on? I'm going to talk through the Calvin Ridley stuff in a second here. Um, Now, I, I'm, my hair's a little bit wet. I just got out the shower. Please excuse me. Uh, all right. That should be good. I think everything is looking good. How are we, man? How are we doing on this fine Wednesday evening here? We got uh, Among Us in here. We got Brand Brendan in here. I do, <laughs> I do this every time I go live, but um, give, me, give me 64 font here. Boom. We got Cody in here. We got Chris Diaz. We got James Parson. What's up? What's up? How are we? How are we? We got Spencer. Thoughts on J.J. McCarthy to the Vikings? I'll get to that in a second here. But let's look at the Calvin Ridley news. The news of the day. Uh, can I get the screen going here? How are we, man? How are we? Oh, boy. You're seeing all of the... You're, you, I just exposed myself. I don't think anything crazy was there. Um, I did look far and wide for a jersey swap for this freaking thumbnail and couldn't find one. So if anybody has a jersey swap of Calvin Ridley, let me know. Uh, all right, so Calvin Ridley, he gets signed for, I believe it's like four years, $92 million. You know what's funny too? My mom just got home, uh, not like right now, but at the time that this was reported. So at 5, 10 p.m., yeah, 5, 10 p.m., she got home at like 5. I sat in the living room, uh, free agent frenzy or whatever was just like playing in the living room, and Ian Rappaport reported this live as I was just like hanging out with my mom. So take, take with that what you will. Um, but he gets signed four years, $92 million, $50 million guaranteed. Pretty, pretty, that's, that is, that's hefty money for like a, what, a 29 year old wide receiver going on 30. We were told it was the Jag. I was actually very excited for Trevor Lawrence. You guys know we've been pumping up Trevor Lawrence this offseason. And I was thinking, right, Zay Jones was perfect in this X wide receiver role. Calvin Ridley did better in his games without Zay or with Zay Jones. Gabe Davis is an upgrade on that. I figured that they were going to re-sign Calvin Ridley. Now, of course, it's a lot of money to spend, right? You're spending money on Ridley. Christian Kirk was a free agent. Evan Ingram was a free agent. Gabe Davis was a free agent. It's hard to build the entire house out of free agents or the entire plane, whatever you want to call it. Then we had him potentially going to the Patriots. That was pretty brutal. Now he goes to the Titans. Yesterday, if you haven't watched it already, we talked through the winners and losers. If we were to talk through the winners and losers of this deal for fantasy, the big massive winner for me, Will Levis. Will Levis is a huge winner, especially if you guys watch the uh, Dynasty Trade Targets video we did. I think I've talked about Will Levis twice this offseason, um, and I'm really trying to pump him up. I mean, now I think that the buy window, it's not closed, but I think people are going to catch on because they're going to look up and be like, well, they're the seventh overall pick, could potentially be Joe Walt, essentially the best offensive tackle prospect since Penny Sewell. You have an offense now that is Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Hopkins, Traylon Burks in the slot, Chig Conquo. Chig Conquo and Traylon Burks, not that great, but Calvin Ridley and D-Hop are pretty damn good. Now, of course, they're not like what they were in their prime, but they're still crafty veteran receivers. Calvin Ridley getting paid to be a featured option. Calvin Ridley can also play his pretty natural uh, more like Z-roll there with kind of D-Hop and uh, Burke switching on and off the X-wide receiver spot. We'll kind of see how they treat that. You could even see, we could see some more slot usage for Ridley as well. I know D-Hop sort of made his way into the slot too, but then you get Brian Callahan, the offensive coordinator from the Bengals. He's now the head coach. He's bringing his dad, who's the offensive line coach, uh, who's like one of the best offensive line coaches of all time. He's coming over. You get Pollard in the backfield. You get Tajay Spears in the backfield, which means they're not going to hammer Derrick Henry between the tackles. They have two running backs that can't really handle like a workhorse role. So this is an offense that's going to pass the ball and give Will Levis like every opportunity to succeed here, which is really exciting for a quarterback in my eyes who has a lot of upside. Now, of course, there's downside there. He's old. In college, he took a lot of sacks. He threw picks. He's not the most perfect prospect of all time, 
but the ceiling is certainly there. So that's all fun. The losers, or I guess Will Levis is a winner. I'm trying to think of like who who the other winners are in this deal. I guess it would be, I don't know, it's whoever is even on the Patriots at this point, not really. I guess Gabe Davis is, I guess Gabe Davis and Christian Kirk are, are small winners. I guess uh, Evan Ingram and Christian Kirk are probably winners here. Uh, I don't really think anything else because it hurts Hopkins, it hurts Ridley because now they're going to be competing for targets with a quarterback who's unproven. So that's not the most ideal spot. Um, and then Trevor Lawrence would be a loser to me as well because if he had those weapons, Ridley, Ingram, Christian Kirk, ETN in the backfield, they're making offensive line additions as well with Ezra Cleveland and Damian Lewis maybe. So that's how I would kind of break that all down. What else we got in here though? Let me know if there's any other questions about the Calvin Ridley stuff because I do want to hop into a draft and just hang out for a little bit. Um, but I feel like I, I summed that up pretty nicely. Uh, JJ McCarthy going to the Vikings. I'm not a McCarthy guy myself. I think if you're going to trade up for a quarterback, you might as well do it for one of the top three. But I also don't know the price that um, the top three would be asking for. All right, let's hop into an underdog draft. Why not? By the way, if you're in here, if you're supporting the channel, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, make sure you check out Patreon. Or <laughs> <laughs> make sure you check out underdog fantasy i'm all over the place fellas my head is spinning free agency has been a very busy time for me you guys know yesterday i posted a video that was like an hour and like 15 minutes long i literally spent maybe like 12 hours on that outline just breaking down every single move and kind of the domino effect of those moves so if you're out there and you want to support the channel make sure you check out underdog fantasy use promo code ron and they will match your first deposit up to a hundred dollars i have a link in the description i believe i link a link common uh pinned in the live chat as well um, if you guys want to hop in and do a draft with us, they have drafts right now for the 2024 season. So why not hop in, take advantage of ADPs? Like right now is a great time to exploit ADPs because they're not going to be up to date in terms of all the news we've gotten with these free agents. So we're going to hop into one of these here. If you want to hop on, hop in alongside me, uh, go ahead. Let me, let me shrink down this. And now I'm exposing myself. You guys see all of my... My desktop is messy. Just everyone, please gloss. Please gloss over that. Um, but what do we got? We got Kyle Pitts in the chat. The one and only. The Kyle Pitts. Uh, let's pop this out here. Put ourselves down here. I'm going to get to the chat in a second. Who we got in here? We got the Kyle Pitts all the way from Atlanta. What a guy. Welcome to the basement. We got John in here. Uh, AFC South could win the Super Bowl. Ah! Maybe. I don't hate that. We got Flett in here. What's going on? Where all great wide receivers go to be washed and finish out their careers. The Titans, yeah. Uh, just traded Devonta Smith, 25 first, QJ and Musgrave for Hill and Hawk. Doesn't f that, that feels about even. Swung my first deal in uh, the Ron World Cup. I ha I'll have to look that out. My Levis belief is finally coming to light. Hope he can figure it out. Yeah, me too. Damien Lewis, a Panther. The Jags got Mitch Morse. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. Have any long-term hope for Traylon Burks any longer? Sadly, not really, man. Like, I wish. I, I, I wish, you know. I really do. I wish Traylon Burks uh, panned out, but it's looking really tough for him. By the way, leave a like. We're out here. Second stream of the week. We're grinding content. We're out here. But how are we, fellas? How are we? I was also curious. I was going to say something on Twitter, but I'm curious what you guys think. I highly doubt this happens. I would give it like under 5%. Or maybe like under 1%. It's it's pretty crazy that it would happen. But the Jefferson to the Bengals idea is fun. Just to see Chase, Jefferson, and uh, Burrow playing together again. I doubt it happens. I don't know what it would even cost to get Jefferson in. Uh, in Cincinnati but I'm curious to a fantasy football perspective for you guys like if, if Jefferson gets traded to the Bengals tomorrow we're gonna go Bijan here at eight why not if Jefferson gets traded to the Bengals tomorrow again I don't think this is going to happen but let's just say it did just for funsies if he gets traded to the Bengals tomorrow assuming T Higgins is gone assuming Tyler Boyd is gone where are you drafting Jamar Chase and Jefferson for fantasy football would it still be in the first round would it be like early second would it be 
one two turn because you see right now they're both top six picks would that hold i think dynasty they remain unchanged but it would be interesting it'd be i mean to sustain like two top six wide receivers in fantasy would be pretty tough what's your thoughts on the jets still not having a wide receiver too I'm I'm so close to driving down to one Jets drive myself and giving Joe Douglas a piece of my mind. I will say though, W's in the chat for today. He did get Morgan Moses. That's a pretty good deal. He got him for like a, a fourth round pick swap and a sixth round pick. So I'll take that. I wish that we went after Deontay Johnson after hearing what he went for, but what can you do? If only in just were cherries and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas is what my freshman geometry teacher used to always say. What else we got? I'm trying to see. Nothing no, nothing of note with these top guys in terms of free agent movement. We got Antoine. What's up? What's up? We got Jack in here. We got Genji in here. We got Al Pal. We got Pickens moving up a good amount, being solo now or staying. Around. No, I think that Pickens gets a nice little bump. He gets a nice bump, Pickens. Because he's going to be the number one wide receiver in that offense. I, I, I think you could sort of project him. Or actually, he doesn't get much of a bump. Now that I think about it, because the market's already very high on him. Now that I'm looking at it, Pickens is going to be Pickens is already going to be pretty high up here, huh? Am I missing? Am I just? Oh, okay. So he's like right next to, yeah, like pick fifty-eight, uh, point nine, like he is right here. That's fine by me. I, I don't know that you have to move him up much higher than that. Like a like fifth round pick. That that's about where I would take him. Oh, we already took Bijan. We have more Marvin. I don't like any of these guys. I haven't taken DJ Moore in a long time. I don't know that I've taken DJ Moore yet at this cost, but I'm just going to f for the hell of it. I, I don't really like much in this area. You could talk me into Marvin Harrison Jr. I've cooled off on A-chan ever so slightly. Just because investing in like investing in any early running back right now that's like in an A-chan spot where they're not they're not spending a ton on running back right now, you always have the looming threat of them drafting somebody. But I, I will say I'm probably overthinking that one because I don't think like I don't know. If the if the Dolphins drafted like Blake Corum or Trey Benson. Actually, no. I, th I think if either of those got drafted to the Dolphins, that you'd see uh, A Chan probably fall to like the third or fourth. So I don't know. I'm not calling A Chan a bad pick. I think that he's just fine. He's just fine. We talked about this before, but everything in the second round sucks. It all sucks. Drake London. Drake London at what is this? The 207? Drake London at the 207 is spicy. That's certainly not where his uh, ADP is. I feel like I recognize this guy's name, the Brunsky. Yeah, Drake London, I picked 19. His ADP, you can see it here in the bottom right, is pick 30.4. So this guy is very much, you know, trying to be ahead of the market, I guess you could say. But yeah, let me know Let me know if you guys have any other questions about free agency, any other questions about the Calvin Ridley stuff. I feel like I covered it pretty well, but I'm down to do whatever. I'm down to answer questions. If you got dynasty trades, I, I might have skipped a dynasty trade or two in the beginning. If you have any of those Send them on in. Remember to leave a like on the stream as well. Helps me out a ton. Helps get this stream in front of more eyes, which is really what we're going for here. I'm on route over Jefferson. Man, with the Darnold stuff. I'm probably still Jefferson over Amon Ra. With, with him, his quarterback being Darnold, I probably take him after Tyreek Chase CD. What do you guys think? With Darnold as the QB1, are you taking Jefferson or Amon Ra? Because I do agree with kind of the way this draft has gone, where there is definitely a tear break between Jefferson to like Puka, AJ Brown, Garrett Wilson area. But it's not easy. The 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 landscape for 2024 is already kind of, and I wouldn't call it brutal, but it's far it, it's far from me feeling like I've figured it out. You know, like because by the time we're in August, I had everything telestrated at that point in terms of like who's going where, how I feel about the value pockets. I'm still feeling things out. I think this is like my 33rd draft, maybe. You said CD Lane would be your wide receiver one if Jefferson got traded to Cincy. Yeah, I do agree. I think the Titans wide receivers are going to play all over every one of the Mixels in the slot. Yeah, I agree. Burks could slide in there and play his best role with Ridley and D Hop out wide. He's just never healthy. Yeah, that's true. That's going to be an issue for them. They're probably going to run into health issues regardless wow there's a lot of good players on the board i really like neighbors and etn here i have been drafting a lot of etn let's go 
Let's go Neighbors. I do really like Neighbors. Third round is steep for him, though. Ron, when do you plan on dropping your updated Dynasty rankings? Um, I plan on working on them. I think I'm going to start chipping away at them tomorrow night. Uh, the goal is to have them done by Saturday, but it's going to be somewhere in that Saturday-Monday area um, is when I'll have them updated. Because I've been trying to wait, like the Calvin Ridley news and stuff, I've been trying to wait a sizable, like a, a, f a decent amount of time just to make sure that every move has happened. But I feel like there's not many more dominoes left to fall. I feel like you got like Curtis Samuel. I guess like T. Higgins could be traded, but that could happen during the NFL draft. Um, it's what, like Tyler Boyd? Oh, Marquise Brown's. A bit, so it's Tyler Boyd, Marquise Brown, Curtis Samuel are like the main wide receivers at this point. You got like Tannehill. Uh, you got some, some still big name offensive line, uh, guys, but it doesn't really matter a ton. And then at running back, it's like Dobbins and Clyde Edwards Alaire. So that's what I'm thinking. I, I think tomorrow we're going to get up a, I wanted to get it up last week, but it just didn't have enough time. Uh, pretty much we did the wide receiver rankings video last week. We're going to do a running back rankings video tomorrow. That's just kind of like my post combine thoughts. I know it's a little bit late, but It'll be my top 10. Uh, I'll talk through the running backs, and then pretty much my goal after that video goes up tomorrow is just going to be dynasty rankings from then through, like, Saturday. Uh, let's see. So, we have Bijan, we have DJ Moore, we have Malik Neighbors. Higgins is interesting in the fourth. Um... You know what? Fourth round, Kelsey, man. I'll, 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 I'll bite. And we'll just sort of see what happens there. I don't mind it. I was between T, T and Kelsey. Got T-Law and Judy, a fourth. Oh, is this in the uh, World Cup? You got Trevor Lawrence and Judy in the fourth for Stafford, Pickens, Hunter Henry, and David Montgomery. Oh, that's not bad at all, dude. That feels like a very cheap price. Probably late first. I agree in terms of like where I would put Jefferson and Chase. Chase and Herbert for Mahomes and Kyron in a one quarterback. Herb is tough. So I don't know if that's Khalil Herbert or if that's Justin Herbert. Um, but if it's Justin Herbert, I would take Chase and Justin Herbert in a uh, one quarterback. Right? Because like Mahomes gets pushed down a good bit. I don't know. I, I always say this, fellas. When you guys ask me one quarterback questions, I know... You know, I should be more of a jack-of-all-trades. But when it comes to Dynasty, I, I have a hard time wrapping my head around it. I don't play in any one-quarterback leagues. I don't do any one-quarterback uh, Dynasty rankings. So it's tough. But on the surface there, I think I would prefer Chase and Herbert. Because I would have, like, Chase way over Kyron. And the difference between Herbert and Mahomes isn't that much. You said start nine, 12-team Superflex. Richardson, Jaden Reed, Laporta, Mims, Douglas... God, there's so many pieces in there, man. What the hell is this, man? You said you're saying Richardson, Reed, Laporta, Mims, Demario Douglas. Or the 102. Which at this point, I'll value the 102 as like about Anthony Richardson. I'll, I'll call that a wash. I will call McBride in like the 202. For Laporta, about a wash. I think I'm probably a chan side, but there's so many moving parts. I, I I don't feel confident in it. You have like Reed Mims. Yeah, I think I prefer the 102 side, but it's very close. I don't know. Uh. So Richardson. Superflex. Yeah, I think like Laporta, McBride in the 202 for Laporta, I think would about be right. So then it's like A-Chan for Jaden Reed, Marvin Mims, and Douglas. It's it's pretty damn even. I think I prefer the 102 side by like a little bit, but it's very close. Uh, Tyler Brown, what's up? What's up? London has been around there in all the drafts I've been in today. Man, his ADP is going to be a second round pick, huh? I'm not all that shocked, but... That's where we're at, huh? I'll be very curious to see where Calvin Ridley goes here. 
Man. All right. So, I mean, we already have Kelsey. Why, why not lean into the KC thing here? We're going to get Pacheco like nine picks after his ADP. Nothing crazy, but why not? Also, at some point during the stream, I'm going to have to... <sighs> order something on DoorDash. You guessed it. You said you got to take so Jefferson over Amon Ross St. Brown for you. St. Brown over JJ and you're a Vikings fan, huh? You move Jason in the 108 to move up to grab Marvin Harrison Jr. I think I would, man. I think I would. Burke spent 77% in the college. I hope to God he stays in the slot. I agree there. We got Billy Mays in here. What's up, my boy? We traded 20, 25 first, a third in JSN for the 102. I actually don't hate that. I don't hate tearing up. If you only have to pay a future first to tear up from JSN to Marvin Harrison Jr., think I would, man. Think Steelers go wide receiver in the first? I don't think so. I think they I think they go offensive line. We'll see. We'll see. I doubt it's receiver, though. I really doubt it's receiver. I'd assume O-line or, like, defense maybe. I really should know because I'm usually on top of the draft stuff, but. Huh. So we're still sort of catching up here. Like, the Aaron Jones in Minnesota. Uh, we have JSN. We have Godwin. Funny enough, as much shit as I've talked on JSN, I actually don't mind his price in redraft. Like, all of these wide receivers in this range are kind of yucky anyways. Uh, so I'm fine just taking JSN. I mean, you're just betting on a year two breakout. I, I don't see that same upside for Godwin. I don't see... I mean, Hopkins gets a bump down because of, uh, of course, Calvin Ridley getting signed. Christian Watson's okay, but, like, I'm not picking him, like, a round ahead of ADP in, like, the sixth round when he didn't really do anything last year. And this is a team that only had two wide receivers at this point, so... Uh, DJ Moore, neighbors. I need another receiver. Why not? I really, I really service people who are joining midstream or uh, are listening on audio. But in case if you're curious, we have Bijan, DJ Moore, Malik Neighbors, Travis Kelsey, Pacheco, JSN so far servicing the audio listeners as P Overzet likes to say. We'll have we'll have to have him on the channel here eventually. But I do know rookies aren't really his strong suit. Do you think the quarterbacks will rise back up to the 2-3 turn again? Honestly, no. Honestly, no. It seems like last year, uh, Mahomes especially just kind of burned people on, on early quarterback. I think you're going to see Allen, and that's really it. I don't think they're going to rise much. You said mess with the haircut. Thank you, man. I mean, I got a haircut a couple weeks ago. This is really me out of the shower. I'm not uh, – I don't want to sit here and say I'm, like, trying out a new hairstyle. It's really just – um. I took a late shower and didn't really want to put product in it or anything. Big W for Spencer. What did Spencer get? You traded Brown, Kirk, Waller, and Chubb for Addison, Jaden Reed, and Tank Dell. Oh, I, I kind of like that a ton. I don't, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I think it's closer than Chris would lead on here, though. Jacobs is being so slept on. No way he should be going in the fourth. Eh... Jacobs is kind of like your very traditional dead zone running back. I think fourth round is probably fair for him. I mean, do you think he deserves to be next to ETN? Because I would say probably not. I would say, to be honest with you, I think this is right where I'm fine with Jacobs. You know, because I, I think there's a tier break after T. I guess maybe not after T. I would say Odunze is in that same tier. But then after that, like, I'm not crazy about any of these receivers. I'll have Jacobs ahead of these backs. Well, wow, Derrick Henry's a fifth round pick, huh? I really, dude, I really think, I really thought in redraft especially that he would, I mean, we'll see how ADP settles, but man, I would have guessed like third round. I will say in, in home leagues, I think that you will still see him as like a second, third round pick. But maybe the, the Henry drafters feel a little bit burned after uh, kind of how that played out last year. Damn, I would have liked Christian Watson there. So now we're, we're pretty squeezed out of receiver. I mean, look at how, look, at, it's just straight running backs available here. And I decided this is a perfect time to go Kyler Murray. I, I still can't wrap my head around why he's so cheap. We'll go Kyler. We don't really have any Arizona stuff lined up, but I feel like that was a good time to detour to get a quarterback because why not? 
<laughs> How does the Jake Elliott signing affect your punter league? You tell me, brother. Uh, just sends Amir White Gus in 301 for a 25 1. Oh my god, yes. That is beautiful. I can't trust this enough, fellas. This is teach tape right here. This is teach tape. You take the running backs that are propped up. Uh, now, I'm not saying you can get a 25 first. Rohan here um, is 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 taking advantage is is robbing somebody blind here but if you can find a way to turn your Zamir Whites your Gus Edwards any running back that finds himself in a backfield with no competition uh a month and a half away from the NFL draft I think it's a pretty good opportunity to sell them um, I'm trying to think through the other the other guys that would fit that bill here But these types of guys, I'm trying to think. I kind of even think Mixon's a sell for that reason, man. I, I don't think Houston's done adding running backs. I think they're going to draft somebody. But yeah, tra trade Zemir White now or hold. Trade Zemir White now. And I was a Zemir White guy when he was coming out of school. Georgia, good speed score, good S. Uh, you know, of course, he played at Georgia, so his SRS popped. I liked him coming out, but this is why we drafted him. Gets propped up. He he's never going to be a guy who's like you know. I, I could I could completely I could eat this microphone here, and he could become Kyron Williams next year. But I would be floored. Huh? The market doesn't really like DeAndre Swift to the Chicago, huh? Debating if we take a running back or receiver here. I think it's going to be a running back. It's not going to be Spears. It's it's looking like Connor or Swift. I'm going to go Connor because we got Kyler. We can get some Arizona linked up here. I like that. I'm not crazy about Connor, but Connor in the eighth round, I mean, you can kind of just do that until the 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 wheels fall off. Shouldn't Kirk be higher with Ridley gone? I think you're right. I think it's just that the market hasn't caught up yet. But I, uh, fifth round sounds about right. I mean, how much higher you want to put him up? Because I can't put him ahead of Odunze. Eh? I think this is about where he should be, early early fifth I think that's about as uh, as high as you can get me to take him. You had the 105 and the 205 for Kyler. I would, but market value-wise, I really don't know. I think I would. But I'm also a lot higher on Kyler than others. But Kyler's going in startups at like a second-round startup pick, and so is the 105. If I was contending, I'm fine getting Kyler there. Steelers probably go in uh, tackle or corner. Yeah, I agree. They're good at finding day two receivers. You're right. Yeah, I've, I've seen them link to Amarius uh, Mems. Which I think would make a lot of sense. They got Broderick Jones last year. Uh, cucked my Jets out of that pick. We'll see. Brian Thomas Jr. to Chicago at nine. I don't think I don't think Brian Thomas Jr. will go in the top ten, but we'll see. It wouldn't It wouldn't shock me to see Chicago do that. Bees on A is pretty nice. Yeah, that's how I'm feeling. Ron's so sexy. <laughs> Thank you, brother. What's McConkie's prospect grade if he goes round one? I think it'd still be silver. So that's because I talked about in the wide receiver rankings video. Um, I changed it so the land zero line grade. I had it so that if you were a second round pick, but land zero line had you with a first round pick, I'd give you a multiplier. The issue is that sometimes that multiplier would put you over what your grade would be if you had been a first round pick. So it would overcorrect. I now have it capped out at what your grade would be in the first round. So Lad McConkey already, his grade right now is already as if he had a first round pick because he's a Lanzier line guy. Like he got that multiplier. He's at his capped out ceiling as if he had first round capital and he's a silver. Um, yeah, if you, went for, if you went like first round to the Chiefs, I don't think I'd have any Lad McConkey. I think everyone would be, you know, drafting him like crazy and I would get it. I would get it. But then he'd be like a first-round pick, and I just can't do it. I just can't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Kyler after Dak is insane. Dude, the Kyler hate is crazy. The Kyler hate is crazy. Zach Moss is a good one. I think Chase Brown's probably a good one, too. Um, a little less of a fleece you sent CMC in fields for Trevor Lawrence, Danny Dimes, and a 205. Huh. I don't mind that. Mm, that one's tough because I, I would say McCaffrey and Trevor Lawrence are probably about even in terms of value right now. I don't really see it that way. 
And it kind of depends on what you think about Fields at this point. Yeah, that one to me, it's close. I might actually side with the field side there. But that one's close. And I've been on the clock for four seconds here. We're going to go Jamison Williams. I'm kind of an idiot there. That's my bad, fellas. I was I was too busy reading comments, and I was on the clock for like 25 seconds. Yeah, the RB dead zone is rough, man. I, I wouldn't really, I don't know. This is The issue is that this is kind of like the green zone for them. Like the round seven to nine area has been money in years past. I can't think of who that would have been last year. I think it would have been Pollard. I think James Conner. Is there anybody else that got like pushed way up that was getting drafted there last year? I think HN was kind of like ninth round area. At least after the Jeff Wilson stuff. Kamara was too, and he actually ended up being great for fantasy. So yeah, this is actually the spot you want to draft him. It's just funny because this is kind of like, and I, I get what you're saying though. Like it's it's a zone of like you look at the available players and it's all running backs that are kind of nasty. But that's just because underdog's so efficient, it pushes them into a range where it's like, okay, this is the, this is where you, we now start doing it. What else we got? A.D. Mitchell's wide receiver four. I got him five right now. You got A. Rich, Lamar, and Kyler in a 10-team superflex. What do I do at 102 if Marvin Harrison Jr. is gone? Um, You probably trade the pick or trade a quarterback or draft a quarterback and figure out the rest later. I actually did that in the... I actually did that in the uh, Crazy Ambassador League. I had a question today from Sultan asking me uh, what I'm going to do with my uh, crazy ambassador series. I'll give you guys an update on that for sure. But that was a team, our quarterbacks were like, I'm trying to think of who our quarterbacks were, but it was like Anthony Richardson. It was Justin Fields, Bryce Young, maybe like a Kyler too. Herbert is falling here. I'm going to take an unstacked Herbert and be done at quarterback. I don't know. I mean, what pick 113. We just got him at... Pick, or we got him at 113. His ADP is 95.2. I mean, I don't, are people bumping him down because they dropped Mike Williams? I I don't know about that one. Do you love hammering the RBs for like five rounds here? Yeah, 100%. No way Pollard's that low. We'll see where he settles. Where is he right now? Seventh round? Yeah. Probably put that up. Oh, I like that, Chris. I like that. I like that. Let's beat that into existence. Neighbors to Herbert. Broncos have officially released Russell Wilson with a post-June 1st designation. Denver will spread the cap hit by taking on $53 million in 2024 and 32 in 2025. That's so that's so preposterous, man. Like, I know we were expecting that, but it's still crazy just to see it. But what are we thinking for dinner, fellas? I'm 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 between. I don't even know what's open, man. I'm between like Thai food, Chipotle. I had Chipotle for lunch, though. I don't really want Chipotle, if I'm being honest with you guys, but... I've also been low-key on my fitness grind shit. Been trying to watch my calories. Gonna be honest, got to got to probably the heaviest weight I've been this football season, just because it's you know it's a grind, fellas. Look, you don't you don't stream every day in August and become Mister Mister August without without paying the piper. But I'm down I'm down about like ten pounds from where I was peak in season. So I'm trying to I'm trying to get back on. Being somewhat healthy. Man, there is nothing that I like on the... Or actually, there's a couple things I like on the board. We're going to go Keon Coleman. You got Wawa in New Jersey? We do. 
We do. Don's at McDonald's. It's a Panda Express teriyaki chicken, like 300 calorie portions. Now we're talking, Jason. Yeah, if anybody out there, if you guys, if you guys have any free game on like low calorie, high protein uh, orders, you can just get at like DoorDash. I'll, I got a couple. Wingstop, if you don't use their ranch, isn't terrible. You can get like a 10 piece chicken, uh, like bone in chicken wings. I think like 100 calories per or like 80 calories per 10 grams of protein per, which is nice. And then the Jersey Mike's chicken Philly. Which isn't bad. It's like a thousand. I think it's like a thousand calories if you get a giant like eighty grams of protein, I think. But that's me that's me on my fitness shit. You'll see, fellas, you'll see. Twenty twenty six, I'm gonna be the next Sam Sulik. I'll get roided up and everything. What else we got, man? You guys got any other questions? Questions, concerns? If you want to ask me about what I got going on. I've also, I've gotten a bunch of questions. I don't know. I, fi I figured we've gotten to the stream now where it feels like we're losing a little bit of steam in terms of fantasy football stuff. Feel free to yell at me if I'm not talking enough about football. Um, but you can also just like ask a question and I'll get to it. I kind of still like Charbonnet. Give me Charbonnet here. We'll take a running back. But yeah, I've had a lot of questions of like if I'm going to do that March Madness video. We will. We'll we'll uh we'll talk college basketball on Monday. I think it seems like they pushed out uh selection Sunday a week later this year. Which is why everyone's like been asking me like, are you dropping the March Madness video? Like, yeah, once we get selection Sunday, my boy. You guys got any March Madness takes? Taco Bell soft chicken tacos, like 120 calories, like a buck. Okay, I see you. How do you feel about starting with Bijan and Saquon drafted at the 8? I don't hate that at all. I will say the double hero RB draft strategy absolutely murdered us last year. Um, that doesn't mean that it's not going to be good this year. It's kind of a year-to-year -year variant sort of thing. It could very much be the meta this year. I mean, we saw two years in a row between Karain and Liam Murphy double hero RB taking down the entire best ball mania. So it could be the meta once again. And if it is, I do like the sound of that Bijan and Saquon. So can we for Alabama to flame out on the sweet 16? Like last year, dude, Alabama's on my shit list. I had a future on them at like 10 to one to win the sec. I placed in the preseason. They were the favorite the entire time. They're at the top of the sec. I could have cashed out for like 50% of what I could have gotten. And with three games to go, they choke versus Tennessee, they choke versus Florida, they give it away to Tennessee, and I was just in piss. So, that's where I was at, dude. Fuck Alabama. Tyler, <laughs> you're saying, and I'm, and look, Tyler, I I'm sorry to say this because you're a fan. I'm sorry to say this, but that's a fraudulent team this year, and I don't know that Nate Oates' style of play will ever be national championship worthy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is a football show. It's a football channel, but that's just something I had to get off my chest, all right? Because when you go down the stretch at home versus Tennessee and you go one for 14 from three in the final three minutes or whatever the hell it was, and you hold Dalton Connect to like 13 points and you still find a way to lose, that's shameful. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I agree. This is a Bama team that the minute they run cold from three, they're gone. Sweet, like... Sweet 16 sounds about right, Tyler. I'm sorry. It is what it is. <laughs> Glorious Illinois going to get your hopes up again. Illinois is interesting. They got what? Terrence Shannon. I don't know much else about them. I think I have a future on them to make the Final Four. So, Genji, after uh, AD Mitchell at four, you got Brian Thomas, Worthy, Keon Coleman. 
Let's see, what can we do next? You know what, Xavier Leggett's going to be a top 50 pick. I'm fine taking him here. Our wide receiver room is pretty weak, I'm not going to lie. Spends a lot of capital on quarterback, tight end, running back early. Trying to land the plane here. As we always do on the channel. So they cannot close out game. We got somebody. Uh, they cannot close out game for their life, especially that game against Purdue. They held a solid lead most of the game, yeah. Illinois is interesting. Illinois is interesting. Chris Diaz, are we talking? Are we talking Carl Anthony Towns' uh, voice? Are we talking um, like Debo from Friday voice? Like, what are? Uh, <laughs> get, give me some context clues because I haven't heard it. In one quarterback, would y'all send? Um, the 102 neighbors for London and Saquon. You know, one quarterback. You could talk me into it. I don't know. That's that's razor close. It's razor close. I think I would. Man. I think if I was a contender, I could do that. Sounds like Randy Moss. He's got that. Dude, have you guys ever seen? I, I know most people know, like him and Jason Williams, White Chocolate, were on the same high school basketball team together, but they sound exactly alike. Comically Southern? Yeah, Randy Moss has that too, but it's Southern, huh? That's hilarious. Xavier Leggett's interesting, man. I, I know I've pointed out comps to Jonathan Mingo. He looks a lot like Jonathan Mingo, but that doesn't mean that Mingo didn't have a ton of upside either. They're just they're just a really really low floor, high ceiling bets, which are fine. Um, but I don't know if he's going to be in a price range that I'll be comfortable with. Let's go Josh Palmer to Herbert. Why not? Why not? 14th round Josh Palmer doesn't feel great. I'll tell you that. It does not feel great, but... I'm fine with it. I never decide what I wanted to get for dinner here. It's probably still open, but god damn it, man. Man. Might be a Thai food. I don't know. Maybe I'll just go upstairs and make something for once in my life. Because now we're at a spot where we're so late that we're running out of healthy options. I'm not trying to pig out. I just can't. You know what I might do? It's expensive as hell. But I might go crazy. Expensive as hell, but I might go crazy and, and get those... Uh, Y'all know the uh, the Thai lettuce chicken wraps from from uh, Cheesecake Factory. I mean, they're taxing over there, uh, but the protein and calories in them are pretty dang good. Um, been on my gym grind too. Not that anybody asked. Roster would come: Burrow, Stafford, Gibbs, Jacob, Saquon, Charbonnet, DJ Moore, London, Nico Pittman. It does bother me a little bit, like. I, actually, Benjamin, I don't think I would, man. I don't think I would. I, I I would really like... I'd really like if you could find a way to get one of these, like, first-round receivers. 
Um, you could definitely get like Tyreek for cheaper, but you could try to go for like your CD Lamb, Jamar Chases, Justin Jeffersons. Like I'd want to get a top end guy. Like DJ Moore and London are fine, but I would want, I'd want a top end guy or two at wide receiver with that team. I don't know if I'm thinking about that wrong, but I think, I think that's where my head's at there. How do you feel about Cup in 24? I'm not all that interested. I, I wouldn't call him washed, but I, I, I don't know that he'll ever be back to what he was in 2021, um, especially with Puka Nakua there. So I don't know. I'm about lukewarm on him. I probably feel similar to Cooper Cup as I have about uh, Keenan Allen the past couple years. And we are on the clock. I think this might be the range where I'd be fine taking Khalil Herbert. As as uh, funny as that may be. No, man, give me Khalil Herbert, dude. Give me Khalil Herbert. I was scared for a split second that we already took uh, DeAndre Swift earlier, but we didn't. And we already have DJ Moore, too, so... If DeAndre Swift goes down, they lean more on the passing game, and then Cole Herbert gets called up. We have all the correlation built in. I know, I know Chris Diaz knows. I'll have to pull up this Xavier Leggett uh, clip here in a second. What else we got? What else we got? Any favorable landing spots for Mike Williams? Man, I got to be honest with you guys. I was much, uh, like, after sort of thinking about it with Mike Williams, dude, after seeing Mike Michael Gallup, where he tore his ACL as, like, this ex-contested catch wide receiver and just zapped him completely, I'm not all that interested in Mike Williams across the board. It's just tough. Coming off an ACL at his age with, like, all the injury stuff that he's had, I, I don't know that he ever really turns in anything meaningful. Is he, like, interesting in best ball setting? Sure. But that's really all. Um, those are really the only spots that I'd, I'd even really be interested at all. Is this, is this Donald Parham time? Is Everett's gone? Chargers probably draft a tight end. Chargers letting Everett walk does certainly open the door. Uh... We're going to go Hunter Henry. I might go. I don't know if you guys have been watching. Uh, I check in on Karain's videos all the time. Pat Karain. I think he's one of the best creators in the space. Um, he had someone that's in the P overs at Discord, uh, Sacrilegious, on. And they kind of like went through lineups that you can draft an underdog based on the amount of combinations you can field in a given week. Because it just gives you more outs. Um, it's not like the... It's not like the ultimate skeleton key for best ball, but it is a nice default thing to look at as you're structuring teams. And the the combination I believe that had the most combinations uh, was two six nine three, and I think this is kind of the perfect team to do a two six nine three. So that's what we're going to do. You could definitely make a case that we shouldn't go three tight ends as we already have Kelsey, but he's a fourth round pick, um, and we we're getting into twenty rounds here. I don't think that there. I think there's worse things you can do with like an eighteenth round pick. So, is there any charter if? I think that we might go with like a Donald Parham here. I know they have Parham, they have Will, they have Disley. Is Parham still on contract? I feel like yes. But please let me know if I'm out of my mind thinking Donald Parham is pa is a uh, is passable next to Justin Herbert. They could cut Donald Parham really easily. 
and that is the fear. Uh, or actually, hold on, is Ever <sighs> there's no way Everett's still out? Or no, Everett's Everett's in Chicago. I'm an idiot. I could certainly go. I'm trying to figure out who I want to stack this last tight end to if we do go with the tight end. Yeah, I saw they signed Will Disley, and I saw they signed Colby Parkinson as well. So who do we like out of that bunch? Parham, Disley, or Parkinson? I think I would lean Parham. You could sell me on Disley. Maybe they draft a tight end too, so that's like a little bit of a uh, of a curveball. Went in for Garrett Wilson right after the season. Sent Ayuk in a mid-24 first for him. Felt even, but I can't see him being cheaper ever. I'm going to be honest. That feels pretty expensive for Garrett Wilson. Bink a 2 TD game in best ball playoffs and he's the guy you need. Now we're talking, Chris. Now we're talking, brother. What do you think? Do we think that Parm's the guy to own? The fact that Donald Palm is only 26 is mind-boggling to me. It feels like he's been one of these like meme players that have been around forever. I'm gonna go, dude. Jalen McMillan's price is ridiculous in big board. I know that I took him pretty far ahead of his ADP there, but Jalen McMillan's a guy that I really like. We put him as our, he's our uh, wide receiver 11. So he's somebody that I actually like more than Xavier Leggett, who we took at pick 150. Um, so give me Jalen McMillan all day. Anytime in this like seven, like pick 200 plus, Jalen McMillan for me is like an auto pick. Madden legend. That is true. I know Zerk like talks about him all the time. Or not all the time, but something that he has shouted out before. But he was interesting. He had like a shit ton of red zone targets last year. I know that we don't have... Um, uh, what am I trying to say? I know we have a different regime, but it was somebody that Justin Herbert liked. So, certainly interesting. McMillan or Polk? I think I'm, I think I'm Polk. Just because I think that he's... Uh, more of your prototypical X receiver that we kind of like. But I have him literally back-to-back. -back. I have him 10 and 11. I think Polk's a better bet to get draft capital, but we'll, we'll truly see. Also, Lance Zierlein, I am curious to see if, uh, if Lance has changed that. By the way, don't judge my, don't judge my bookmarks, please. Dude, the thing, uh, Jalen McMillan right now is a bronze to um, Jalen Polk's silver. Simply because Lance buried McMillan, man. I think that he still has him buried. Yeah, dude, 597 is brutal. That is really bad. This is where he has McMillan. What, what, what are your gripes, Lance? I do respect Lance a ton. Um, all right, let's make this pick first. So we need one more running back. One more receiver, one more tight end. So this has to be a running back, now that I think about it. No, let's go Pierce. In a, in a world, I don't even really like Pierce. In a world where we're getting him in the 18th round, fine. Dude, who, where's the kid? Do they not have him in the player pool? The kid from uh, Purdue? That's what I was looking for. Uh, I, I want to say, what the hell is his name? Like Tyrone Tracy? Am I flubbing that? I guess he's not in the player pool, now that I think about it. But I would have liked to take him there. Yeah, not in the player pool. Um, But yeah. McMillan's buried. I did want to see what he said about him. He has been altering these after the combine, so maybe we see McMillan get bumped up. But man, he does not like him. Neither does the next gen stats uh, model either. Overview wasn't tested as much in Washington scheme. Takes time to get his route speed. Agitated and knocked out of rhythm by physical coverage. Seems to be missing a rundown gear to get under deep balls. Bogus and cashing let him down on contested throws. Huh. At least he run blocks from the slot. 
Not that we care for fantasy, but. Salt target with a good size. Huh. Do you watch Steve Smith clips? Uh, hell yeah, man. It's part of the underdog family. Cut to it. I do. I, I, I see the clips come up. Um, I watched through his like first wide receiver rankings video. Uh, you have the 105 and 107 and a two tight end, tight end premium. God damn. You have Njoku and Ferguson. Am I crazy to like all of the wide receiver and quarterback options, including JJ over Bowers? I think you are. I, I can't do McCarthy over Bowers in that format. I can't I can't do I think it's a two tight end and a tight end premium. Yeah, I can't. I can't. I, I think one oh seven is the absolute latest I could put Bowers in that. But yeah, I was talking about Tyrone Tracy. He's he's fun, man. Uh, I was doing the running back rankings outline today. And if Tyrone Tracy Jr. or whatever the hell his name is wasn't like 20... He's like 24 already. So you're not getting any value gain from him as an investment. But he's he looks like Antonio Gibson where he's a wide receiver converted guy. Tested really well. As a runner as well. Like super explosive. Missed tackles forced uh, per touch out the ass. Like... Shows up green and everything for somebody. Like, the production's never going to be there if you switch from wide receiver to running back um, in terms of, like, the production metrics. But everything else that you're looking at, he looks great in. Uh, Tyrone Tracy, it's just that he's, like, old as hell. So he'd be somebody that I actually would like more in redraft than Dynasty. All right, let's do it. We shall take Parham here. And we'll see if we can get Rondell more on the other way around. Make a nice little 2-6-9-3. Yeah, exactly. I I'm, I'm fine if you want to have the other guys over Bowers. Even in that format, it still makes me a little bit queasy. I think in that format, I think I would have Bowers over Odunze and McCarthy pretty comfortably. Um, kind of buying the Jeff uh, JJ hype if you get Jefferson, but I understand, yeah. Yeah, and that dude in that format, like Bowers could be somebody that's like worth a first round startup pick, you know. I've been trying to get the one hundred eight, so I don't have to make the choice. <laughs> Just take Bowers and profit, my boy. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd go with Dunze over JJ McCarthy as well, but I would still want Bowers over Odunze and McCarthy. In that format. I think in like normal tight end premium, it's pretty close between Adunze and Bowers, but you get it. What else do we got? What else do we got? Let me lounge back here. I will say after this pick, I'm going to run out um, just because it's like it's already 915 my time. This is kind of a late night stream here. Um, got big things planned for tomorrow. Big things. So be on the lookout. I do appreciate everyone that came in here to hang out. If anyone wants to know what the final team is looking like, we went Bijan, DJ Moore, Malik Neighbors, Travis Kelsey, Isaiah Pacheco, JSN, Kyler Murray, James Conner, Jamison Williams, Justin Herbert, Keon Coleman, Zach Charbonnet, Xavier Leggett, Joshua Palmer, Khalil Herbert, Hunter Henry, Jalen McMillan, Damian Pierce, and Donald Parham. So where did Deontay go in this draft? To me, it's about a wash. Um, his quarterback goes from Russell Wilson to Bryce Young, which sucks, but he goes from being, uh, you know, competing with George Pickens to, for targets to competing with nobody for targets. So to me, it's kind of a wash. Um, you do have the built-in upside where if Bryce Young, you know, in year two, takes that like Jared Goff type step forward, 
then you're cooking with some heat there. But if he's still Bryce Young that we saw last year, then, like, god damn. You're looking at, like, you know, Carolina years, DJ Moore, of, like, a lot of uh, a lot of frustration. Where did he go here? Six rounds? That's about where I'd be comfortable taking him. I think six rounds about where I'd be comfortable. But all right, fellas. I appreciate everyone out here that came out, made some time to talk through the Calvin Ridley stuff, the free agent stuff, all of that good news that we've gotten over these last couple of days here. Um, be on the lookout. I think we should have a running back rankings video up as soon as tomorrow. But I think that's going to do it. I love you guys. I do miss these streams. I loved when we streamed every day in the summer. It's just, it's not sustainable. Um, but yeah, we're getting back into the swing of things. I think we now have like two weeks in a row here of a couple videos a week. We're getting back into the streams or things are starting to come together. We're updating the spreadsheets. We're getting free agency. We're getting the combine. We're army crawling our way to the NFL draft. Lots of exciting stuff happening here. So if you want to follow along, subscribe, leave a like. Check out Underdog Fantasy. They will match your first deposit up to $100 if you use promo code RON. That's what we just did, that whole entire draft. You can go down below. It'll be in the description, the comment section down below, and pinned in the live chat that you're looking at right now. As always, I love you guys, and I'll see you all in the next one.